All right, welcome to this training for the Charleston Central Virtual Academy. This is a parent Google training brought to you by a partnership between uh, Future of School, Charleston County, and a local education consortium, the Low Country Education Consortium. Um, tonight, this is week three of our training of five weeks. And today we're gonna be covering um, Google Classroom and Google Drive on iPads. The focus is just iPads for this evening. So just a, a little bit about me. My name is Eileen Fernandez Parker. I have 32 years experience in education. Uh, I've taught at all three levels. I've coached from kindergarten to grade 12 on iPads and Chromebooks. And I am a Google certified, Google for Education certified trainer. Uh, so um, I'm gonna switch my screen over to my iPad. So give me a second because I want you to see exactly what I see on my iPad. All right, so that should be coming up on your screen. And I do want you to know that during our sessions, we do have a chat monitor um, so that if you have questions, if you do have questions, you would be able to um, ask in the chat for help and support. And we are going to be covering uh, Google Classroom and Google Drive. So first we're gonna start with Google Classroom. And the idea here is that you will be able to experience Google Classroom in a non-threatening environment. So what I've done is um, I have created a Google Classroom that you can join as a parent. Now what you need to know is that um, with, Google, with Google Classroom, if you are signed in as your child under their CCSD account, you will not be able to join this classroom because it's an outside account. So what you would need to do is log in as yourself using your Gmail account, and then you'll be able to join this outside Google Classroom. So what I'm going to show you is the, there is a code that you need so that you can so that you can uh, join the classroom. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that so that you're familiar with it. So I have two accounts open. One is a teacher account and the other is a student account. So right now you can see my iPad, which is the student account or the learner, which you would be in this case. And when you open up your Google, um, your Google Classroom, you have to have the app. And it looks like this chalkboard with a person on it. And because we use Google Classroom a lot, I drag mine down onto my taskbar for the most used apps. And when I click on that, it's going to open up. And this is an account that I have that I don't normally use Google Classroom in, so it's empty. But your, if, you, um, if, if you're in your student's account and you open up Google Classroom, you're probably gonna see some colored tiles there from past classes that he or she has been in, all right? So what we're gonna do is, down here in this bottom right-hand corner, you should see this big blue plus sign. We're gonna tap on that plus sign and you'll have two choices, to join a class or to create a class. Now, normally students only have the join class, but because if you're in your Gmail account, um, you get both. So you can be a teacher and a student at the same time in your external Gmail account. So you're gonna choose the join class, and then there is a class code blinking right here that you're gonna have to type in. So I'm gonna drag my teacher screen over and 
This is the code that you have to type in. So it's M as in Mary, I, Q, V, F as in Frank, M, W. So I'm going to move this over to the side and I'm going to type it into my iPad. And you're going to want to do the same thing so that you can experience Google Classroom um, completely. So once you've got the code in there, then in the top right hand corner, it says join. Now, if you are in your child's account up here, you might be able to hit switch account and then hit add another account and then type in your Gmail account and log in that way. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm in the right account. I'm gonna hit the join button up here. And it takes a minute to add you to the class. And now you'll be able to see that I am inside the classroom called CBA Parent Training, okay? So what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to move my teacher self off the screen because that won't apply here. And what I'm going to do is first thing is up in the top left hand corner, you're going to see these three lines. Some people call them the hamburger. We tend to call everything something that has to do with um, food. Some people call that a hot dog because it looks like a hot dog on a bun. Everything has to do with food. It's ridiculous. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap the home that says classes, and this will take you to your, basically your dashboard. So if you or your child, whatever account you're in, is, uh, has been in multiple, um, has been in multiple uh, Google Classrooms, they'll all show up here um, as tiles, okay? So I'm just gonna tap on the title to get back into the class. So now I'm officially in the class, all right? Now, the first thing we wanna look at is down at the bottom. If you were on a laptop, these settings would be at the top of your screen, but in, um, in the app, everything is, well, not everything is reversed, but the, this is reversed. So down at the bottom, you've got three items. You've got stream, you've got classwork, and you've got people. I'm gonna start with people. So when you click on people, you'll see everybody in the class except yourself because these are your classmates, okay? So right now there are only two people logged in here, okay? Now I'm gonna go to the opposite side, the stream. The stream is always the landing page for all Google Classrooms. Now, some teachers have everything landing in the stream when they um, add activities in the classwork section it also posts in the stream um, so you might be seeing activities there as well but i like to just use the stream for community building and for conversations so you can see here that there is an activity that says click below to share one positive thing that happens to you or that you observed in the past week. So here where it says add class comment, when I click on that as my other self, um, it allows me to click where it says add class comment and I can type something in as my answer. And I'm just going to type, I saw and heard a baby laughing and it made me smile. And then I'm going to hit this, what looks like a paper airplane for send. And now I can back out. And here it says one class comment. So if I tap on that, it takes me in to see it. So if there were, if, if we had more than one person commenting right now, then they would all show up there, okay? Now I'm gonna back out of that. And that's the only thing that is in the stream right now, but the stream can get very busy very quickly. 
New announcements are always at the top of the page. So if you're looking for something old, you'd have to scroll all the way down. Um, and they are chronological. So um, the students can't move anything, only the teacher can. So if the teacher has a, a standard Monday announcement, she can just keep dragging it to the top so that kids can keep jumping into it, okay? All right, so now we're gonna move to the classwork tab. So that's the bottom at the middle. So when you tap on that, I'm just gonna go over two major things that are, are used the most in uh, Google Classroom. And the first is a discussion question, and the second is a graded assignment. So when I click on the discussion question, these, these um, big headings are uh, what they call topics, so that if I had four discussion questions over the course of a week, I can make them all fall underneath this major heading called discussion questions. Now, teachers can choose whatever topic headings they want. So for me, I did discussion questions, but with the virtual um, schooling, a lot of the teachers who are doing virtual put the week date up there so that students can very quickly find the work for the week. So that's one way that topics can change um, from class to class. Another thing they might do is they might have topics by chapter titles or just by topic. So it might be the Renaissance or it could be the letter R or it could be vowels, right? Or it could be fractions. So these topics are not standard across Google Classrooms. It depends on how the teacher's brain works. So we've, I did discussion questions and graded assignments. So if there were um, 100 discussion questions over the course of a year, you might need to actually tap on the topic and then you would be able to scroll through all of the discussion questions, okay? But for this one, what we wanna do is we just want to tap on it. Now, what I want you to notice is that I'm gonna, it says right here at the top, due Sunday. So this is a heads up that it does have a due date, okay? I'm gonna back out using this arrow and I'm gonna go back to the stream because I want you to notice Uh, usually you've got your when your work is due right here. So I'm going to tap on the three dots. And there is a to do list right here. Okay, so I'm going to tap on that and it will give me um, a summary of everything that is coming up due. Okay. Notice I've got three tabs assigned, missing. So that means I'm, I'm late and done so that I can see what I've done. So this is where you can check in with your child to, to see if anything is missing and to see what is coming up. Okay. So again, you're going to tap on the hamburger or the hot dog, and you're going to tap on the to do tab. Now, what's nice about the to-do tab is it tells you everything in all of the classes. So if four of the teachers are using Google Classroom, you don't have to open each class. You can see all of the work for all classes in one place, okay? Uh, all right, so I'm gonna back out and I'm gonna go back into CVA Parent Training and I'm gonna go back into Classwork. So. In this discussion question, this is what it will look like from the student point of view. Now, up here at the top, you can post a class comment. Now, the only time really that you might wanna post a class comment, and this could be um, deactivated by a teacher if she doesn't want that happening until she trains the kids on how to do it properly. But this might be a good place to say, um, I can't find my notes on this topic. Can somebody help me out? And then somebody might share their notes with you, right? Or um, I thought this was due such and such, you know, where did I go wrong? So it should be a question about the, the assignment, right? Now, right here is where the actual question is. 
So it, in this discussion question, it says, write your educated guess at why there are 12 months in a year. Hint, think about the moon. Only after you answer will you be able to see your peers' answers, okay? So if I click here, this is where I need to click to type my answer. I'm not going to type a serious answer. I'm just going to type, this is my answer for a grade. Now, if I type that in in a real situation, I'd get a zero, right? Um, but I just want to show you what happens. Once I hit the turn in button, then it automatically is turned in and it's letting me know it, I won't be able to make changes. So I'm going to submit it. And here it says, see classmate answers. So when I tap on that, this is where I would see everybody else's answers. So if you're watching this video and following along, then you would be able to see, you wouldn't see my MUSC Eileen answer until after you answer. What's really nice about discussion questions is that they have a reply button that threads. And what that means is if you're answering MUSC Eileen, your reply is going to go directly below her post. So I'm going to tap on reply and type, this is where I would see my reply to MUSC Eileen. And I'm gonna hit the airplane and then I'm gonna back out. And now you can see here that there is one reply to what MUSC Eileen posted. Okay, now teachers tend to leave this deactivated in the beginning because you really do need to train students um, on how to respond appropriately because sometimes they're used to, um, you know, cutting, cutting each other up uh, and cutting up with each other. Um, and then, of course, there's all the negative stuff that they've seen on social media. So we have to kind of untrain them and then retrain them for how to respond appropriately. So this might be turned off in the beginning um, um, and it might not, but that would definitely be a good uh, discussion to have with your child just about what's appropriate and being polite and civil discourse um, and how, how to disagree politely with a person because you don't always have to agree, right? Okay, so I'm gonna back out of there and down here at the bottom, you can see there's a private comment place. So up at the top is a public comment for everybody in the class to see. Down at the bottom is a private comment, and this is gonna go just to the teacher. So this is where you would say, um, Ms. X, uh, I was sick last night throwing up and I didn't have time to read the assignment, right? And then you would send it to the teacher. And, and you know the student can feel confident that only the teacher is going to see that, okay? Um, you know, it's, it's, you don't want to write the dog ate my homework, but um, you, definitely, you definitely want to let the teacher know what's going on because teachers appreciate knowing because sometimes we will just assume that a person is not interested because they're not doing anything, right? So let the teachers know. So I'm gonna back out of that discussion question and now I wanna show you a graded assignment. Now for this graded assignment, there is no due date there, okay? Because what I wanna do is you could, you, if you remember, it didn't show up in the to-do list. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna swing over here to my teacher self and I'm going to go into that assignment and I'm going to edit it and add a due date so that you can see Um, what what that would look like. So I'm going to add a due date of the 30th because we'll be using this live in classes up until the 29th. And I'm going to save that. And now on my iPad, I want to just pull down to refresh the screen and see what's going to happen with that. So notice my discussion question has disappeared because I did it. Now, if I go into done, I can see that 
my discussion question was done early even, right? Um, so I'm going to back up again. And I'm going to go back into my, my um, classroom and my classwork. And I'm going to tap on the graded assignment. And now what I want to do is I want to look in that to do and see if it posts now. So once I open up that assignment, that's when it shows up in my to-do list, okay? So if the to-do list is not 100% reliable, if your student has not opened up the assignment that, that was due, okay? So that's something that you need to be aware of. So I'm going to go back into classwork. I'm going to go back into graded assignment. And for this assignment, what we've got is Uh, what we've got is, this is a graded assignment. And down here at the bottom, you can see this, this lip at the bottom with the um, arrow pointing upward. It's very important that you tap that because that's where any attached files will show up. Okay, So I'm going to um, push it back down so that we can read the assignment. So in here, it says this is a graded assignment. You must click the attachments to open them up. This will automatically put a copy in your drive inside a master folder called Classroom with subfolders CVA Parent Training and Graded Assignment. So Classroom is the master folder for all of the Google Classrooms. And then there should be a subfolder for each classroom that you join. So mine was called CVA Parent Training but probably your child would have um, a math, a social studies, a science, and an English. And it might say uh, Mr. G's 2021 social studies or something like that. And then inside that folder, each graded assignment gets its own folder. And because I called this graded assignment, that's what that folder would be called. If I called this the Renaissance test or project, then this folder would be called the Renaissance test or project, okay? Now, what's super important here is that students tend to start these and then they might even finish them, but they forget to hit the mark as done or the turn in button. So it's super important that the kids know to do that and that you remind them. So I'm gonna tap on that to show the work and right up here is where the file is that it's going to be my job to fill in. And then once it's ready, I'm going to hit the turn in button. The turn in button lets the teacher know that it's ready to be graded. All right. So I'm going to click on the PDF. Now, what is super nice about iPads with PDFs is that you don't need Kami to be able to write on them. Up here in the top right hand corner, you can see there's a pen and iPads have already built this in um, with the, um, well, I should say Google has built this into their mobile app. So when I click on the pen, now I can actually write on my worksheet, right? It's a PDF which basically is just a scanned worksheet. I can also type because sometimes it's really hard to, uh, to write on the iPad. And it would be better if I turned my iPad long ways and it just changed the view and disappeared. So hopefully it's going to come back. But I can hit the A for the iPad. Here it is. It jumped onto the different monitor. So down here, I have the A. So when I tap on the A and then I tap somewhere, now I can actually type my answer. And that's built into the mobile app. So it doesn't matter whether you have an iPad or whether you have um, an Android tablet. This is built into Google Classroom, um, so you're good to go. All right? Now, up here in the top right-hand corner, there's a Save button. So you have to save your changes. 
So I hit save and it's saving now. And now I am going to close this out by hitting the X in the top left-hand corner. Now I'm just a little bit nervous that it didn't, uh, that it didn't save my changes, but there they are. So I'm good to go. All right. So now I have to hit the turn in button so that the teacher knows that it is ready to be graded. Okay. Now let's just say that you hand something in and then you realize that you didn't read the directions properly and you think that you're going to get a 50. You can unsubmit and then you can make changes to your file again. However, everything that is turned in is time stamped. So the teacher can see the first submission and when it was done, as well as the second submission and when it was done. And if you do it five times, she can see all of them. Okay. So if you find the need to do to unsubmit and resubmit, use the private comments feature to let the teacher know why. Okay. So you might need to say, I realized I woke up in the middle of the night, right? <laughs> and I realized I didn't do it properly. So I unsubmitted and I fixed it um, because I figured losing 10 points was better for being late, was better than losing 50 points for doing it all wrong. Okay. And then send that to the teacher. She can see all of it. Okay. Um, all right. So now that that is finished, I am going to hit the down arrow to back out. So what I what is difficult right now about the mobile version is that you can't see the turn in button unless you hit this expand to pop it up there. OK, so it's not really in your line of vision to help you remember it. So that might be something that we could send to Google and ask them uh, to do a better job with that. OK. Now, these the three dots up here pops open this little thing. It says report abuse, but that's where you could actually, no, it's not going to help us. Forget that. Okay, so I'm going to back out of that. And now there are still other types of assignments, but I want to use the rest of our training to talk about Google Drive a little bit. Um, but the one thing I do want to show you is that you can go to people and you can see who your classmates are. Now they used to be able to, they used to have an email um, envelope here so that you could actually email your classmates if you needed help, but it looks like they've taken that off maybe for reasons beyond our control. But what you can do if your teacher turns it on is go back to the stream and if you need to, if the teacher has turned it on and you're gonna use it responsibly, you could hit the share with your class and you could post something there to one of your classmates, right? And it should be classroom appropriate and it should have something to do with this class, right? So you don't want to say, <laughs> well, I suppose you could to build community say, John, I saw that touchdown. It was awesome, you know, um, because that is a community builder. Um, but like, I probably wouldn't say, you know, we're meeting at the coffee shop on Friday afternoon to get a soda. Who wants to go? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So just keep it, just keep it um, classroom appropriate. And I'm sure if you're not doing it right, your teacher will let you know. Okay. All right. So that is a quick and dirty trip through Google Classroom. Um, now, in the desktop version, there are shortcuts so that you can see your um, folder. So up here in the top right-hand corner, you can see this little, it looks like a clipboard almost with a person on it. When you tap on that on your iPad, it brings up all of the things that you've turned in just for that one class. Okay. So that might be a shortcut to your, to your uh, classroom folder. Okay. And you can, when you type on the, um, sorry, when you tap on the, um, up here, it kind of looks like a tornado to me. It means filtering. 
When you tap on that, this window opens up at the bottom. And if you just want to see what was either assigned, what's been returned, or what's missing, you can filter it by doing that. So if I tap on returned, nothing has been returned. Okay, so it hasn't been graded yet. The teacher would have to do that and then it would come back to you graded with a grade. Okay. All right, so I'm going to close out of Google Classroom. Oh, here they are. When you tap on the uh, hamburger down here where it says classroom folders, when you tap on that, it takes you into your drive and I need to be in the correct drive to be able to see it. So here is my notice up here at the top. It says classroom. That's the master folder I told you about. And then CVA parent training is the next. And then when I tap on that to open it, now you can see everything that I've handed in for, um, these are just assignments, right? Uh, for this class. So these are my graded assignments. Now notice one of these is blank and the other one is filled out. If you tap on the link for an assignment, every time you tap on it, it creates a brand new copy. So you want to just make sure you only tap on it once. <laughs> okay. And then, um, and then you should be good to go. But if your child says, my work disappeared, I did it, and it's not there, chances are he or she tapped on the same um, make a copy for each student. They tap, tapped on it more than once. So once you, let me back all the way back into, I'm going to double click on my home button uh, to get back into my classroom. This is important. So I'm going to go back in here. So if I tap on this, if I tap on this again, I'm going to get a third copy. Okay. So if the student has already clicked on it once, then what we have to do is we need to go to the um, filter and then go to graded assignments. Is that going to work for us? No, because it's still the same. We're going to have to back out to our classroom folder and then open it up and then find the one that actually has the work on it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to finish up with Google Classroom. I'm going to close Classroom. And now we're going to go into Google Drive. Now, Google Drive is this icon down here that looks like a recycle symbol, okay? And I put it down here on my taskbar because it's one of the most used apps that I use, all right? Now, if you find that your apps are dancing like that, you can just tap on the background or you can hit your home button. Either one will work, okay? Now, I'm gonna open up my Google Drive. And this is nice to know. They don't ever touch your files and they don't use them for ads. So I'm just going to hit dismiss for now. So right now you can see that I'm inside my MUSC Eileen uh, folder. Now I'm going to switch accounts by tapping on that circle in the top right hand corner. And I'm going to go into a completely different account. Okay. Um, just for this demonstration. Now, at the bottom, you can see there's a home button. If you tap on your home button, these are your recent files, okay? And there isn't much there, so you might think, oh my gosh, where are my files? But it's, it, it, it's just the recent files. So what you really want to be in is on the opposite end where it says files, right? And when you tap on that, now you can see all of your files. And I have a lot of files right now. Okay, now, the first thing I wanna show you is up here in this top right-hand corner, only in the files menu, you can switch your view. So right now it's in list view, 
and these are alphabetical. Now, what's really nice, sometimes you, you might be working in, with a file or a folder. Folders are always listed first in Google Drive. Um, and you might want it to be at the top because you're tired of scrolling, right? If it starts with a Z, you don't want to scroll all the way to the Zs to get it. So when you, do, when you um, are naming your file, you can put this underscore at the beginning because underscores are always listed first. So that's just a little tip or trick for you. If you want it to be there um, at the top, so you can see that I did that with a good number of a good number of folders, right? Now, after the underscores, then notice emojis go next. So you can put an emoji in your title and it will then be at the top of your um, list as well. And then numbers come and then alphabet, okay? So that's just a little tip for you to help you out. Now, some people are very visual so they prefer grid view. So notice up here in this corner, what we have is, can I blow this up? No, I can't. What we have is it looks like blocks, right? So when I tap on that, I get blocks. So this is my grid view where they all line up. And you can see some of my folders are colored here. And then things that are not in folders you can actually get a preview of them, right? So if I'm looking for a particular file um, and I can't remember the name, but I remember what it looks like, I might, if I don't have too many files, be willing to, sorry about that graphic, be willing to um, look for it this way, okay? But what I really would like to share with you is up here, this search in Drive is where all the power is. So when I tap on that, if I know that I'm looking for a, um, a presentation, I can just tap on presentations and it's only going to show me my presentations. Okay. Now, what I can't do in this view is go into block view and search this way at the same time. But at least now I know that only my, uh, only my presentations are coming up and notice PowerPoint is a presentation software, so my PowerPoints will come up as well. And you can store all of Microsoft's files in your drive to save room, right? And um, like if you know that you have to work on a file at home from work and work is all PowerPoint, you can just keep it in your Google Drive and you can actually edit all of Microsoft's files inside your Google Drive. So you don't have to worry about changing the format and converting and all that kind of stuff, okay? So again, with the search in Drive, I'm gonna tap the X and I can choose PDFs here. And then if I know a word um, that is either in the title, so goodness gracious, I can't think of what any of my PDF titles are. Uh, so let me hit PDFs and so welcome right here, okay. So I'm going to hit PDF and then I'm going to type, oops, wrong keyboard. I'm going to type welcome. And now it's only bringing up the PDFs that have welcome in the title. All right. Now, what if I don't do, if I don't do the PDF and I just put the word welcome, what's going to come up is, uh, the PDFs are coming up, but also this folder that has the word welcome in it. All right. So this search bar is super powerful for you. And I'm going to back out of that. Okay. Now I want to show you how to color your folders. So the three dots next to each of the folders is the same as your right click on a mouse. And right here, you can see the change color feature, okay? So it pops up, you have all these nice colors to choose from. I'm just gonna choose a different one now. And now it's orange, okay? So you can see that as you go through, it's a nice visual. This green one right here was super bright. My, you know, my eyes were drawn right to it. So folders that are super important 
like this classroom folder, right? That's my Google Classroom folder. And if you tap too long, it, it, uh, it does other things. So make sure you just tap on the three dots. I'm gonna change the color to that. I'm gonna make it blue because blue reminds me of Google Classroom. Okay, now, in addition to being able to look at your files down here and your recents under home, you can click on starred. And notice there's a star here in the bottom right-hand corner of each one of these. They're also, on some of them, they have the two people, which means that this has been shared with other people. Okay, so you can see right away whether or not it's been shared. So if I wanted to, I'm going to go back to my main files. And if I want to, let's say I want to star this one. I'm going to tap on my three dots. And the third one down right here says add to starred. So when I tap on that and I go to starred now, it's right here at the top. Okay. All right. Now we only have another few minutes. So I'm going to go back to, oh, now I'm going to go to shared. Okay, so the notice um, these are all of the files that other people or accounts shared with me. This is not organizable, so don't try, okay? What you want to do is Anything that is important here, you want to click on the three dots. And then right here, you have the recycle symbol with the plus, which is the Google Drive symbol with the plus sign, meaning you want to add it to your drive. Now, notice it says add shortcut to drive because the original is still in the shared with me. And actually, the real original is in somebody else's drive. So what is sitting inside your shared with me is a shortcut and you're just moving it into your drive so that you can organize it. So once you add it, once you want to try to add it to your drive, you don't want to just throw it in there because that's the equivalent to like not, not folding your clothes and just throwing them on the floor of your room, right? There's no organization. Everything is a mess and you can't find anything when you need it. So you're just frustrated. So this automatically pops open and you're going to select your drive and then you're going to find the folder that you want to put it in. Now, if you don't have a folder and you need one, then up here in the top right hand corner, there is an add folder button. So you're going to tap on that and then you're going to um, type in there whatever it is. So I'm just going to make it up and say it's my bank statements and hit create. And now at the top, you can see that you just created a folder called bank statements. You haven't finished the job yet. It still says no files in this folder, but you're going to hit the add button. And so now if I go back into my files and I go to B for bank statements, here it is. And when I open it up, there's my file that I just moved into it. Okay. So let's go over what we've done so far. We talked about the home button. We talked about the starred button and how to star. We talked about the shared with me. Um, this is where things land. And then you have to add it to your drive. And we talked about how you can see the files in your drive. We talked about changing the view up here in the top right hand corner. And one more thing about the list view, you can sort them by uh, alphabetically, right? So right now they're sorting in one direction. And if I tap it again, um, I can choose to sort it by last modified, which means it, whatever the last things were that I touched, Notice bank statements is at the top now, right? So this is a way that you can find your most recent files as well and not get frustrated. I can also do last opened by me. 
and then I can put it back and sort by name again. If you are in grid view and they are not sorted, oh, this is nice. Um, the mobile app has more power than the desktop app because you can't sort in grid view on your uh, laptop or your Chromebook. So you can do the same exact thing there. Uh, I don't think that, think that you, the computers is just if you are syncing your Apple with other Apple devices. So if you have an Apple laptop or an Apple phone and you synced it with your iPad, then you might be able to see something underneath here, but you might not even have that tab. All right. And I'm going to tap on the hamburger over here. This really, this icon means that it's a pop-out menu. So if you threw something away accidentally, you can find it in the trash here. And notice that it deletes after 30 days. If you don't delete it, it deletes it for you. Um, you can turn your Google Drive um, on so that if you lose Wi-Fi, you can still work offline. So if I turn on um, work offline, let me just show you what that would look like. I'm going to open up my Google file. I have a code of conduct here. I'll go into my Google Hangout. Okay, now. And now we're into Google Docs, which we're gonna be doing next week. But there is a way that you can set it for um, working offline. So we would need to be doing that. Um, we would need to be doing that inside some of these settings. So let me just back out here for a second and let me look at something again. So instead of opening up the file, I'm going to tap on the three dots to get the right click. And the fourth one down says make available offline. So if I make it available offline, that means that I am prepared in case the Wi-Fi goes, off, goes out. Okay, so that's super important to know. And you want to train your students that they need to set that whenever they're working on anything that, you know, especially that is important. Um, because what happens is, if I go, if I back out and I go to my offline ones, these are the ones that are set to be used offline. And I can open this file up and I can continue working on it offline. It will not save to my drive until I connect, reconnect with Wi-Fi. But when I reconnect with Wi-Fi, it's automatically going to upload my changes to the drive so that it's in the cloud. And at that point, um, if it was shared with anybody, they would be able to see it. Okay, so for collaboration purposes, you can't collaborate unless you are um, online, connected to Wi-Fi. But if the Wi-Fi goes out, you can still continue working on your own, no excuses, get your work done. And then when the Wi-Fi comes up, you're good to go. Okay. Um, I'm just going to look to see if there's anything else important that I need to look for. So the, the, um, the starred and the shared with me notice are also right here inside the pop out menu. Okay. And you've got settings here that you can go into um, and you can change your theme to make it light or dark. And um, for the students and even for the adults, at night, it's important for, for, for everybody to be putting on dark mode because the, the bright light messes up your sleep patterns. So that's something that is super important for us to train everybody on. Um, and so if you're not familiar with how to do that, um, that is something that, that you definitely want to learn about all of your gadgets, your phone, your Chromebook, your iPad, everything. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Oh, one more thing. From inside your drive, I'm going to switch back to my actual drive. So here it says Google Drive. I'm going to go back into my main Google Drive. And if I need to create a brand new document, 
it's important for me to open up the folder that I need to be in first. So I can back out to get into my main drive. Uh, let's say I'm gonna, I have to create a resume. I'm in my resume folder down here in the bottom right. I can click on this plus button the same way, the same place that the plus button was in Google Classroom. And I can upload files. So if I have something saved to my iPad, I can upload it. I can create a new folder from here just by hitting the plus and then folder. I can add a picture to the folder by hitting use camera. And then instead of going to my iPad, it will go into my drive. And that's a trick that works with your phone too. So if you're out of storage on your phone, you can open up drive and hit the plus button and then use camera and you can you can um, take videos and they will they will save directly to your drive not to your phone so that's important to know when you're out of storage right uh, and then of course you can create a doc a sheet or a slide just from that plus button and the best part about that is that it lands in the right place because I opened up the correct folder called resume and so now my file should be where it belongs okay now having said that um, within your drive if something is in the wrong place uh, it's and you need to move it you can click on the three dots and then choose the move button. And then you have to tap on my drive and then find the folder that you want and move it there. Now, if you have access to a laptop, it is much easier to do on a laptop because you can, um, you have a menu bar over here and you can just drag from the right into the left. So I, I don't recommend organizing your um, Google Drive on an iPad. It's not, it's not as easy as it is on a, a laptop or a Chromebook. All right. So uh, our next session, we're going to be doing this same training on Chromebooks, uh, which pretty much applies to laptops as well and desktops. So if you'd like to join us for that training, um, you're more than welcome to.